Hello everyone, welcome to HRC Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at Crowbar, the Rangers at Point Duhok, published by Flying Pig Games and designed by Herman Lutman. The basic goal of this game is to find and destroy the six German guns, also to set up some roadblocks along the road at the top of the map there, and then also capture as many POWs and German units as you can. All of those things will allow you to increase your victory point total. And then at the end of the scenario, you decide how much you have succeeded or how much you have failed. Depending on how many points you get, you can become a military legend or have a legendary military performance or all the way down to a disgraceful performance as well. So overall, what's my initial impressions of this game? It's well designed, the components are solid, and there's a lot of replayability to this game. We'll talk about more of those as we go forward, but even just like the beginning setup of the game where you're trying to get out of the ocean, onto the beach, and then over the cliff is a lot of fun, and then obviously you're gonna have move inland as you go. Um, but just that, it, it, just the initial start of the game is a lot of fun, and you can kind of get an idea uh, right from the get-go uh, just how much fun this game is gonna be. So let's take a look at what's in the box. First and foremost is the map. Now it's beautifully designed. Um, it's really colorful, easy to read, good layout, solid construction. Uh, no issues there at all. We've got several different uh, counters that you'll use throughout the game. These are some of the landing crafts. We've got some, some information markers as well. The markers are big. They're thick. Uh, they punch out easy, very easy to read, very easy to use. Um, lots of good information on them. Uh, great quality components as far as that's concerned. We also have event cards. Um, these drive some of the actions of the game or a lot of the actions of the game. So we'll be using these a lot. We have some combat dice, one for the Germans, one for the Americans. And then we have what I consider to be kind of the core mechanic of the game, these different colored dice, and we'll talk about uh, these in a little bit. You also get the rule book, pretty easy to read, uh, very well laid out, lots of good diagrams, lots of good descriptions. I'll show you a few pictures as we go through these as well. But overall, really good quality. I like the examples. Um, I like the layout. There are a couple of places where maybe things could be closer together, but I think that's kind of hard to avoid in most games. But overall, really good, um, easy to read rules. I would suggest that when you uh, get the game that you go to the Flying Pigs website and print off the frequently asked questions and errata page. There's not a ton of them, um, but they do answer uh, the questions for you. I had a couple questions, went uh, right to these and they were answered here. This is a really good document. Just print it off and keep it handy. And you're going to find that it's going to probably answer almost every question that you would have as you kind of go through the rules. Now, with a lot of games, I kind of tend to try to get things set up as quick as possible. And then I kind of roll through it and read the rules as I go along. This game works pretty good for that. Having that frequently asked questions document and the errata document will definitely help you uh, with that process as well if that's the way that you'd like to play games it's also probably not a bad idea just to you know obviously read the rules before you play but i think you could peruse them once and then get right into the game playing and kind of figure out the mechanics as you go along uh, this game pl plays really well that way i like that you also have a sequence of play chart that'll walk you through the whole process uh, very well laid out, very well done. On the back side are some other information that you'll use a lot, like special events, open fire, uh, those types of things. Really handy chart. Once you've played a few times, you don't really need the rule book too much. This chart will do everything for you. You also have a summary of the ranger events. So when you inevitably end up drawing the chit cards or the tokens, these will tell you uh, what each of those tokens means and what they do. And on the back side is the Germans. Again, very handy, eliminates a lot of flipping back and forth the rule book. Um, so that's something that I like a lot as well. And then you also get this track here, and this will have the time trackers. So you know what day you're in and what time increment you're in. It'll have a reinforcement phase, a German counter effect, uh, counter attack phase as well. And then you also have your victory point conditions and trackers over here too. A uh, really handy chart as well. Probably not a terrible idea if you're going to be playing this game a bunch to get that sheet laminated since you're going to be moving markers on it quite a bit. Um, I've probably played 8 to 10 games so far and it hasn't uh, given me any trouble as far as wear and tear is concerned. But, um, you know, or put it on a piece of plexiglass or something like that. So what about the gameplay? Well, at its core, this game has a sequence of play just like almost every game does. And essentially what you're doing is you're trying to get 
the rangers from in the ocean or in the sea onto the beach, over the cliff, and then all the way through. And like I said before, the goal is to capture the guns, destroy the guns, set up some roadblocks, and take as many POWs as you can. You are kind of racing against the clock in this game. Um, as you move forward and you draw choke tokens and, the, and each turn ends, you're going to be moving a time marker along a time track and you will eventually run out of time. So the faster you get your goals, the better off that you are. As the old saying goes, um, Rangers move forward, right? So you are not trying to play this game slow, which adds an interesting element uh, to the process. In order to do that, you use these movement dice. And this is kind of where I think the game is uh, really kinds of shines, uh, for me at least. Like I like games with dice. I like to roll dice. I like the games to not be completely random, but I do like to ha have some surprise and have some risk involved to where I don't feel like everything is just, you know, me reading charts and, you know, all right, X happened, do this. X happened, do that. So you're not really in control of the game. In this game, you have lots of decisions to make. And I think a big part of that is, well, one, the dice, and two, the special ability cards and the commander options, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. So one of the ways that you move are by using these dice. And each dice has a certain amount of risk involved uh, when you move. So the green dice has the least amount of risk, but you're probably not gonna move as far as you might with one of the others. Then you have the yellow dice, that's the next riskiest, then the red, and then the black. So you are trying to figure out how quick you can move to get to where your goals are, with also thinking about the amount of risk that your units are going to take. So if I know that like when I'm on the beach and I'm trying to get over that cliff, I tend to use the black dice because I know that I might get a roll of three. I'm probably going to take some damage, right? But I'm probably going to get over that cliff side a little bit faster. If I'm in a spot where I would like to maybe move another space and not take a lot of risk, then I might roll the green dice. So you're really left with a lot of choices as far as how fast to move and how much risk that you're willing to take to do those things as well. If you've taken a lot of hits that, you know, that turn or that activation, then maybe you don't want to be rolling the black dice at the end of that turn because you could take a hit that could knock you out of the game or do something else that might not uh, further your goals very much. So there's a lot of thinking that's involved in which dice to use and how much you should be pressing your luck. I will say that it seems like to me though, uh, that the game kind of rewards that risk. It can be devastating, but if you play too timidly, you're probably not going to get done what you need to get done. So probably best to be aggressive, or at least that's my experience so far. And uh, these dice are really cool in that regards. Uh, another aspect of these dice too is as you're taking these risks, right? So you're rolling the black dice. It increases the risk that you're going to have to stop where you are, right? So like I said, you got to move forward. So you got to kind of figure out how much risk am I willing to take? Not only will I maybe take damage if I roll this black dice, but I also might have to stop or maybe, um, you know, even worse things will happen too. So it's an interesting kind of mechanic to the game. Adds a little bit of randomness, but you get to kind of control what that randomness is and what that risk is as well, which kind of makes for a unique kind of uh, a unique system of gameplay. It's a really cool feature that I like about this game. So as you roll, the dice will activate events as well. So you'll end up pulling uh, tokens out of your hat that will tell you what you need to do. So in this one, it's, you may find cover. On the back side, it may be Hitler's buzzsaw, right? So each of these events do different things, and that's when you use your card for the events to determine what just happened in the game. Some dice have uh, more probability of drawing those, those uh, tokens. Some dice have less probability of drawing those tokens as well. And then also you run the risk always of of hitting a time marker, in which case you draw an event card, and then that may increase the chances that you're gonna have a German counterattack and you move that tracker down, or maybe, see what the next one is, that was a German attack as well, it may move your time increment up as well, right? So again, you're racing against the clock to get off the beach, or to get up, find the guns, set up some roadblocks, and take some POWs. So that's the basic kind of mechanic of like, you're trying to move along your column to get where you're going. Excellent. Uh, fun fun way to do things. There are essentially four major zones in the games. Oh, there's really three, but I'll go ahead and call it four. The first is that you have the pre-invasion sequence, which is where you're setting up all the units and your kind of your start area. You got your Fox Company, your Dog Company, your Easy Company, and then you move into the C zone, and that's where you're 
trying to figure out how to get your, uh, your landing craft onto the beach, get your units off the landing craft, and then over the cliff. The beach and the cliff is also a zone, and then you have the inland zone as well. Each of these zones come with their own special rules. Now, none of them are overly complicated, but they're each a little bit different, which provides each zone kind of its own unique flavor as you move through the game. Like, I kind of find that when you're in the starting zone or the pre-invasion zone and then the, and the sea zone, things are a little bit uh, more random, right? Because you're not, you're not in control of as many things. But as you start moving forward, then you get to have a little bit more uh, say in what happens in the game as well. Again, that's a really cool mechanic. There's enough randomness to make, this, to make every game unique, but not enough randomness that it negates your decisions, which I think is awesome. There is a lot to this game but it's not an overwhelming amount of this game. There's a lot of strategic options in this game and a lot of ways you can approach this game. Um, and I think that's a really cool thing about the game. So what are some cool elements of this game? As I talked about before, the dice are cool. I really like this mechanic a lot. It adds a lot of variety, a lot of kind of unique experiences to each of the game. And it's really kind of fun. I didn't really think this would be the case when I first picked this up the game, but it's really kind of neat when you think when you roll each of these dice about the risk that you're taking and whether or not you should be taking that much risk or not taking that much risk. It's, it's really kind of a unique thing. A lot of times, you know, if you're just drawing cards, it's all the same risk, right? You draw the cards random, which is fine. Or if you're, or if you're rolling dice, you know, that kind of becomes random, but here you kind of have control over the amount of risk that you're going to take with your, with your move. And that's just a, a really kind of a cool feature of the game. So I won't belabor that point, but if some of you are kind of like wondering, hmm, I don't know, that sounds like it's a lot of randomness. It is, but yet it's also randomness that you control and randomness that adds excitement to the game. So I wouldn't let this deter you uh, whatsoever. I think this is a really cool feature of this game. Another place where I think this game really shines is the special actions and the commander abilities. Every time you're doing something with a unit, you have the ability to maybe spend one of your movement points to do something special. That really changes the game. That also kind of says, all right, do I keep moving forward or I do something like reveal what's in a hex adjacent to me or do I fire into an adjacent hex uh, to me or do I do a commander ability that might affect the game in this way? So it's not just all roll the dice and then move forward. You're also using some of the results of the dice movement points to spend on special abilities or special actions. And I think that's really where the game becomes very strategic, right? You you roll the dice and you use these actions in a way that's going to help your cause. And if you don't use them, I don't think you're gonna be very successful. But if you use them too much, you may not be moving fast enough. So it really adds this kind of um, depth of strategic thinking and options and replayability for that matter. But without so many different options that it really grinds the game to a halt, right? So it's that really good balance of strategy and continuing to move in excitement, right? So you're not gonna get bogged down, but it's not, you know, just a mad dash across the, across the map either. You've really gotta think about what those abilities are and what they mean and how you can strategically use them to help your units out. It's an excellent mechanic. Also the event uh, chits or the events tokens that you draw out of your handy dandy ice cream hat um, also make a big difference in the game. You know, there's all kinds of things from like reconnaissance fire, open fire, you get uh, reinforcements, you can find uh, smoke, you can, all kinds of things. Assault, right? So if, like, I always like these. It seems like they always come at their worst time. So you draw this, you get a German, a German draw, and all of a sudden it's an assault on dog company or, or assault on um, easy company or fox company. And then all of a sudden, you know, they'll take three of those in a row and you're kind of decimated on that side of the border and those set of columns. Um, it's really kind of cool. Again, I love that you also are kind of in control of how many of those chits you're going to draw based on how aggressive you're being by using the dice. Makes for an interesting dynamic, right? The more aggressive you are, the more things that can happen as you move along. Again, I think that you still, you need to be aggressive in this game. That's what drives it. Um, but if you're like totally reckless, it's going to backfire. But again, if you're not aggressive enough, then it's going to backfire as well. That's so a really kind of good balance there. So overall, kind of mechanics aside, I think this game offers a lot. There's a lot to this game. There's a lot of depth to this game that you may not kind of think about when you first see the rules and you first see the map. You know, it's a pretty straightforward rule set. It's a pretty 
straightforward and clean kind of map and there's not you know 400 counters that you're moving around at one time and keeping track of all of those things however there is a depth and a strategy to this game that makes each game unique and it also allows you to vary your your kind of approach so if you try one thing once like i'm going to be ultra fast this game and see how it works the next game i'm going to be a little bit more conservative and see how that works you will find that the game will play differently based upon the strategic kind of theme that you decide that you want to be or you may decide halfway through the game hey i got to shift gears and i've got to really slow down until i can beef up my units again or i've got to speed up because i'm behind where the time tracker is and i'm running out of time to find those guns um, so it's a really cool depth of game that i think that if you just look at the map you're like oh well that's a very simple simple game it's easy to play but it's i think it's kind of difficult to be really good at and to get into win consistently so I, I think that the strategically this game is top notch and will provide you with a lot of fun. As a side note, and probably not nearly as important um, or really even relevant to that many people, is this game is really good at stopping and starting. You go by columns, right? So each, you know, each unit you activate and then or each company you activate and then you activate each unit as you go. Right? And then you have a, a little currently active unit tracker here that you can put on each column so that you know who's going and who's who's not what that means is is that i can come downstairs if i've got 10 minutes and activate a unit and run it through its, its phases and then i can just move the marker over and i can go and then i can come back and pick up again and then i can go and i can come back and pick up again probably not a huge deal to a lot of people but i kind of have a schedule a lot of times where maybe i only have 20 minutes to play well, this game is great for that i can stop and start with no problem whatsoever I know that I can roll my four dice and get through an activation of a unit once I kind of know the rules, probably in five to 10 minutes, right? Depending on how aggressive I want to be, depending on how, how much I want to push my luck and push forward. So I love that about this game. You can literally play for five minutes at a time if you want and not sacrifice anything at all. I, I love that about this game. Overall, I think this is a really solid, solid game. I enjoyed the heck out of it. It's one of those games that I'm going to play uh, probably for quite some time, probably multiple times. And, you know, after I get tired of after playing it, you know, 20 times in a row, I'll set it on the shelf and then I'll leave it there. And then a year later, I'll come back to it and play it some more. It's one of those kinds of meat and potato kind of games that I think that you get a lot of mileage for your money out of. So I uh, definitely recommend you go pick this up wherever you can find it. You can order it on the Flying Pigs website. Uh, you won't be disappointed whatsoever. So that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. I hope everything is going well and you're staying safe. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that um, like button so that you'll get notifications when we have more videos. Have a great rest of your day.